Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about meshed analysis. Um, this is a part of a DC circuit video wherein we're going to tackle one of the network theorems in DC circuits, and this is mesh analysis. So for today's video, we're going to learn how to write meshed uh, equations and solve the meshed currents, such as in this uh, figure. In our example, we have two mesh currents that is represented by I sub 1 and I sub 2. And uh, for this uh, video, we're going to solve the what are the values of the branch current I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3. And we are going to uh, solve this branch current using the mesh analysis. So first of all, how do we write the mesh equations? Okay, For this uh, example, we have two meshes and we have I sub 1 and we have the I sub 2. As you can see, they are in the uh, clockwise direction. Okay, So how do we write those uh, mesh equations? So for example, in our mesh 1, okay, so mesh is basically just like KVL, okay? How do we write our equation for the mesh one? So here it is. So we are going to have a loop around this mesh. So as you can see, this mesh I sub one, okay, involves, we have 15 volts, we have the five ohms and we have the 10 ohms and finally we have the 10 volts. So we can start at any element in the circuit as we perform mesh. But it is a practice that we should start here okay, in, a, in a voltage source, okay? And the sign that it enters, okay, that would be the sign of the voltage source, okay? So let me give you a, an example. So we first start with the 15 volts. So it enters in a clockwise direction of the current. It enters the negative terminal of the battery of the source, so that would be negative 15 volts, okay? And the next thing we are going to do, okay, by counterclockwise direction, here is our first element, and we come with the 5 ohms and the 10 ohms in the clockwise direction. So what will happen is that if this uh, 5 ohm and 10 ohm is, uh, is uh, being uh, in the mesh I sub 1, what will happen is that we will have we will add these two uh, resistors. So we have five ohms plus ten ohms, and that is multiplied by the mesh current I sub one. I'm so sorry. This should be in small case I sub one. Okay. So you will you will write you will get the sum of the the resistances being uh, in the mesh I sub 1, okay? So that should have a positive sign, okay? You will simply add all of those resistors being included in the mesh I sub 1. And of course, what will happen? This 10 ohms is also a part of I sub 2. So what will happen is that we will be having a minus sign here, okay? And then we're going to multiply 10 ohms by the I sub 2. It's minus because we are referring to the mesh 1. And the current in the mesh 2, okay, is I sub 2 in the 10 ohms. So it should have a negative. And uh, of course, we must not forget that this mesh current I sub 1 enters through the positive terminal of the voltage source, 10 voltage source. That, that is equivalent to 0. Again, the recap. We should have a recap of what we did. So first, we have a mesh. We perform a KVL, okay? Like uh, in our mesh analysis, I sub 1. So mesh I sub 1 from the uh, 15 volts source, it enters negative 15. And then what are we going to do next is to add all of the resistors Okay, being included in the mesh I sub 1, and that is plus, okay, plus quantity 5 ohms plus 10 ohms, and it is I sub 1. And of course, we have to consider that this 10 ohms is also included in the mesh I sub 2. But since we are on the mesh I sub 1, we are writing the equation for the mesh I sub 1, so this should be minus 10 ohms multiplied I sub 2, and finally, the I sub 1 enters the positive terminal 
of the 10 volts, so it should be 10 volts, and that is equivalent to 0. So, I'll drop the units, so we have negative 15, plus we have 10 plus 5 is 15, I sub 1, minus 10, I sub 2, plus 10 is equals to 0. So, if we are going to uh, simplify this, we have 15, I sub 1, minus 10, I sub 2, negative 15 plus 10 is negative 5. Okay, and we transpose it on the right side, we have 5. And this is our first equation for our first mesh. Okay, and again, we have two unknowns, I sub 1 and I sub 2. So we should have two equations in order for us to solve these two unknowns, I sub 1 and I sub 2. So same process for writing the mesh equation for our I sub 2. So first, let's start with the 10 volts. So in the clockwise direction, the I sub 2 enters the negative terminal of the 10 volts voltage source. So we have negative 10 here. And again, we're going to add quantity plus quantity all of the resistors involved in the mesh I sub 2. So we have 10 plus 6 plus 4 multiplied by I sub 2. That's positive because it is included in the mesh analysis of I sub 2. And again, the I sub 1 here or, or the 10 ohms here is included between the I sub 1 and I sub 2. So the minus here will be the 10 times the I sub 1. Okay? And that is equivalent to 0. Again, the 10 I sub the 10 ohms is both included in the mesh current I sub 1 and I sub 2. So uh, when we write the mesh analysis too, it should be negative 10 I sub 1 because we are performing mesh on the second uh, mesh, which is I sub 2. Uh, if you wish to recall on our mesh I sub 1, okay, the negative part there is the I sub 2 because this 10 ohms is being shared by the I sub 2 whereas we uh, complete the loop by the I sub 1. Okay, I hope you, are, uh, you, you get what I'm trying to say. That's, that's how we write the mesh equations. So simplifying, we have negative 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 4 is 14. Now, I mean, that's 20. I'm so sorry. 10 plus 6 plus 4 is 20. 20 I sub 2 minus 10 I sub 1 is equal to 0. Uh, arranging that, so we have negative 10 I sub 1 plus 20 I sub 2 is equals to 10. And that is our second equation. Now, the circuit analysis part ends here. Okay, so we have the equation 1 and the equation 2. The only thing that you need to know about mesh analysis is how to write the mesh equation. And we need, uh, and I have uh, already shown it a while ago, a while ago uh, how to perform these mesh equations. So the next thing is be able to solve simultaneously what is the value of I sub 1 and the I sub 2. Okay. So we can use any methods. Okay, since this is since since this is a linear equation, okay, we can solve by substitution, we can solve by elimination, we can solve by Kramer's rule, of which that is my my favorite rule. Okay, in solving the unknowns for uh, every equation. So if I'm going to rewrite again our equation, okay, so our equation is. 15 I sub 1 minus 10 I sub 2 is equals to 5. That's our first equation. Our second equation is negative 10 I sub 1 plus 20 I sub 2. Okay. 20 I sub 2 is equal to 10. Okay. So, we can solve okay, this equation I sub 1 and I sub 2 by uh, elimination. Let's try so, if I'm going to multiply this equation 1 by 2, okay, all of them by 2, so what will happen is that this would be 30 I sub 1 plus 20, uh, I mean minus 20, minus 20 I sub 2 uh, is equals to 10. And we have to rewrite our second equation plus 20 I sub 2 and that is equivalent to. Okay, if I'm going to add uh, these two equations, okay, so we can solve it by substitution or elimination. So as you can see, negative 20 I sub 2 plus 20 I sub 2 will be cancelled. And we have 30 minus 10 or plus negative 10, that's 20 I sub 1. And 10 plus 10 is equal to 20, of which we can easily solve 
I sub 1 and that is 20 over 20 which is equal to 1 ampere. Okay? And finally, when we solve I sub 1, we can solve I sub 1 in any of our equations here. It's either the equation 1 or equation 2. So if we substitute, substitute I sub 1 to equation 2, I said any equation, if we substitute this, uh, we can get I sub 2. So it's either equation 1 or equation 2. So for this problem, let's choose equation 2. So we have negative 10 times I sub 1, that is 1, plus 20 I sub 2 is equal to 10. So what will happen here is negative 10 plus 20 I sub 2 is equal to 10. And transposing 10 on the negative 10 on the, negative, uh, on the right side, so we have 20 I sub 2 is equal to 10 plus 10, which is I sub 2 is equal also to 20 over 20, which is also 1 ampere. Okay, so the mesh currents, the mesh currents I sub 1 is equal to 1 ampere. I sub 1 is 1 ampere. I sub 2 also is 1 ampere. So how do we, now, how do we, uh, <coughs> Sorry, so, excuse me. Uh, how do we calculate I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3 here? So if you will notice, okay, if you will notice, this I sub 1, mesh current I sub 1, which is 1 ampere, is the same current as the I sub 1 here on the branch current. So that is equivalent only to I sub 1, which is equal to 1 ampere. So that is our I sub 1. The same goes for our I sub 2 here. Okay, notice that if we continue the loop here, the I sub 2 is the same as the branch current, okay, which is 1 ampere. <clears throat> okay, so that's the value of the I sub 2. How about I sub 3? If we have a KCL here at node A, this is a node. If we write the KCL equation, that is I sub 1 is equals to I sub 2 plus I sub 3. So why did we did this? Because we need to get I sub 3. So if you get I sub 3, I sub 3 would be I sub 1 minus I sub 2. And that is 1 ampere minus 1 ampere. The I sub 3 value is 0 ampere. So meaning there is no current here. So that's it. We already got the correct answer, which is I sub 1 is 1, I sub 2 is 2. Uh, I sub 2 is still 1 and I sub 3 is 0. Now, that is uh, solving okay, our unknowns using elimination. Okay? How about okay, we, did the, uh, we, we do it, okay? we do this into matrix form okay? or the Kramer's rule. So, I suggest that you have to familiarize yourself in using this. This is Kramer's rule. In solving for the unknown because in circuits 2 you are not able you will you, you will not be able to use your calculator in solving the systems of linear equation because it involves already um, complex number and you cannot do that in your mode 5 3 or in your casio wherein you're going to simply input the coefficients of the equations and viola you get i sub 1 i sub 2 and i sub 3 in in, in its best way to use kramer's rule so for example, we have again our our equation one is 15 i sub one minus 10 i sub two is equals to five, and we have negative 10 i sub one plus 20 20 i sub two is equals to 10. So if we write this into matrix form, we have 15, we have negative 10, okay, we have negative 10, we have 20, and that is the i sub one, and we have the i sub two here. And that is equivalent to our constants, okay? So that's how we write this into matrix form. This is in I sub 1, this is in I sub 2, coefficients of the I sub 2, and this is the constant, okay? So what are we going to do is we're going to get the determinant, okay? We're going to get the determinant, let's name it delta, of this coefficient. So get the determinant of that, 15, oh, negative 10, negative 10, and 20. And how do we get the determinant? Of course, we are going to multiply its diagonals. So that is 15 times 20, okay, minus, okay, the 
another diagonal, opposite diagonal. So we have negative 10 okay, times negative 10. So if we're going to input that in our calculator, our delta or the determinant of this uh, equation would be 200. Okay? That's not the answer. And how are we going to get I sub 1? Okay? So, we're going to get the determinant of what we call delta sub 1. What is this delta sub 1? This is the determinant of the matrix of which we are going to replace this first column with the constant. Okay? First column, this will be replaced by 5 and 10. So, we have 5, 10. We have negative 10 and 20. Then, copy the second column okay? because that's delta sub 1. And of course, get the determinant. That's 5 times 20 minus negative 10 times 10. Okay? And that results also to 200. And how do we get I sub 1? I sub 1 simply has the formula of delta sub 1, which is the determinant of this over the delta, which is the determinant of the coefficients. So we have 200 over 200. And that is equivalent to 1 ampere. Okay? For I sub 2, if we have delta sub 1, we can get delta sub 2. And that is, that matrix is, we're going to replace the second column of this matrix by the constant. So we copy the first column. So we have 15, negative 10, and then we have 5 and 10 for the second column. And get the determinant, that's 15 times 10 minus okay negative 10 times 5 okay and don't be surprised because that's also 200 and in order for us to get i sub 2 using this formula so we have i sub 2 is equivalent to delta sub 2 okay we have used for i1 delta sub 1 for the uh, for i sub 2 it should be delta sub 2 over the delta so, as you can see, 200 over 200 is equal to 1 ampere. And you can solve I3 again by our circuit a while ago uh, by having a KCL here, which happens to be 0 amperes. So, that's how we solve mesh analysis using the uh, elimination and the matrix form or what we call the Kramer's rule in order for us to find the mesh currents. So the important part here is that we know how to write the mesh equations. If we write the, the, the correct mesh equations, and definitely uh, we apply some mathematical methods here in order for us to solve I sub 1 and I sub 2, then definitely we can get the correct answer for the mesh currents I sub 1 and I sub 2. And uh, use any other relationship if there are uh, some unknowns that are being uh, asked in the questions. Okay, so I hope you learned something in this video. This is only the mesh analysis part one of our network theorems in DC circuits. So you expect that uh, 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 I will be uploading some of the uh, videos, okay? Uh, part two, part three of this mesh analysis and other network theorems. So that's all for today. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Again, this is Engineer Abbott. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you again.